The history of sports cards goes back over a hundred years. We are on the pursuit to find the biggest and most interesting sports card collections across the United States. Join us as we travel the large interstates and the narrow unpaved roads in our journey to continue chasing cardboard. spring training okay so it was getting a little chilly up in northern Idaho so we found a way to get down here to Phoenix Arizona for spring training we're gonna go to a tournament with my son Jackson's playing in we're gonna go see some spring training games tops provided us some boxes to give out to kids we're gonna do some man on the street stuff we're just gonna have a good time I'm excited to take you along for the ride So just dropped Jackson off. He's doing a little preparation for uh, for the big tournament tomorrow. And we're gonna go ahead to spring training and then hopefully find a collection later on. Excited for the day. So the Hove Lane is great until you realize you have to get over seven lanes to get to your exit. All right, mission accomplished, safely done. If you like crossing seven lanes at one time, you should definitely like chasing cardboard content. Be sure to hit the like button below. Okay, so we're going back and forth with a guy named Devin. We actually found this collection popped up here in the area on Facebook. And we're seeing if we can maybe fit it in the schedule and go check it out tonight. But we're texting back and forth with Devin and he sent me a list of his sticker prices, which is interesting. He's, he's taken the averages of the last three to five sales of some of these cards that we like, which in this market, some of these prices that he has on cards go back four to six months. And as we know, prices change really fast. So the averages and the sticker prices he wants, they're a little bit unrealistic. And so it's gonna be really interesting if we can find a way to meet him and talk through and negotiate on this collection. Cause I think his sticker prices versus reality are gonna be the hardest hurdle to get past, but I'm really interested in these cards, some Giannis's and Curry's, Doncic, cards that I like buying and reselling anyway. So hopefully we can make it work. All right, so we are here outside of the Mariners and the Padres Peoria Sports Complex where they have all their spring training games. We're gonna go see the Padres and the Royals play. I'm super excited. I've never seen the Royals play spring training outside of their own field and surprise, so let's go check it out. We just walked in the ballpark. I wish you could smell everything that you get. Even at spring training, you smell the hot dogs, the pizza, the popcorn, the cheese. Everyone's laying out in the lawn. This encompasses everything right about the sport of baseball. I could just lay here and just sleep all day and enjoy this day. It's amazing. Fernando Tatis Jr. the newest things added to baseball this year is that pitch clock. You can see it back there. Ooh, drop him. No. All right, so when you come to games like this, any baseball game for that matter, you're coming not only to watch the players, you're coming to consume as many ballpark calories as you possibly can. We're gonna go get started right now. We'll do three brats. Do you want uh, onions and peppers on that? Onions and peppers? Chad, really good to meet you. Nice yeah, to meet yeah, you. yeah. Love yeah, what's your name? Rochelle. Marcel? Rochelle. Rochelle, Rochelle. Cool. Good to meet you. So Wyoming here in <laughs> spring training. Love our show. That's cool. So we're here in between the seventh inning, seventh inning stretch. What better way to stretch your fingers than by opening up some packs of cards? I'm gonna go see if these guys right here want to open some free packs, courtesy of Tops. Go check it out. You guys collect cards? Yeah. Do you collect cards? Yeah. You want to open some free cards? Sure. Oh, yeah. Say thanks, Tops. <laughs> thanks, Tops. All right, I'm going to open some with you. You can have them all, though. 
Now it's second base number 54. What's the best card you got in your collection? Uh, I don't even know. Now it's next base number 85. <laughs> Have you guys tried to go get autographs here? Yeah, we tried. Yeah, is it impossible? Yeah. Really? There's a lot of people. And leading off for the Royal third baseman, Nick. Have you guys ever done these uh, home run challenge cards? No. So this is what you do with these home run challenge cards. You go and you pick a day that you think this guy will hit a home run. Riley Green, if he hits a home run, then you get a special card from Tops. Yeah, so that's pretty sweet. I'll leave that there. All right, who's a Giants fan? Anybody? Oh, uh, no. I know some more of my favorite. City Connect. Oh, nice. Dang. Yeah, Nino and Frank. All right, show, show that card to the camera. Grayson, Anthony, and Frank are Cap patch card, number to 299. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh, I got this. I got this. I got this. Grayson. Yes. Good attention, please. Oh, yeah. That is for Bradley. Nice. Number 18, Gabe. 18, 18 for that. Oh, that's sweet. So that's called a rainbow foil. Oh, my gosh, dude. Number to 10, Mike Trout. Oh, my God. Dudes, who's getting this card? You? It's yours. It's not mine. I want to sleeve this up for you. Oh, my God. Wait, actually, I'm dead serious. Six of ten, Mike oh Trout. This is an acetate clear card. People hunt, spend thousands of dollars to find this card right here. That, that is a monster that's card. Are these anything? These ones? Oh, that's that's a special pack. Yeah, that's cool. Those are cool. I can't believe we just pulled that card. I've opened a hundred cases looking for an acetate clear. Yeah, I just. You want to know the odds of getting that card? Oh, let's find it. Oh, I'll take more. Oh, yeah, totally, dude. Yeah, it's all yours. Thank you. You got it, guys. Clear base. One in 3,590 packs. I'm going to give you, you, you're getting the last pack, right? You guys cool with that? Last pack's going to you. What is this? Is this anything? It looks like a nice like, card, but. Oh, that's cool. All aces insert. That's a cool card. Yeah. Yeah. So here's some sleeves for you guys. So this, Thank, you. You can... Thank you. All right, dudes. What's your name? Roman. Roman. Diego. Diego. Jason. Jason. Hey. It's all right. What's up? Sorry, you missed all the fun. What was your name? Alex. Alex. Good to meet you. Cool. Enjoy, guys. All right. Are you kidding me? So we open a random box of cards, 2023 tops, and we pull a 2,000 plus dollar card. Mike Trout, clear acetate, unbelievable. Such a cool experience. It was fun to be able to open 2023 with these kids. It doesn't sound like they open a lot of cards, but I guarantee you, they're gonna be opening a lot more cards in the future. That was fun. Wait, hold up. After looking online, that Mike Trout card had the last two sells at $2,500 and $3,000. What? So that trout, yeah. the last one sold for $2,500. That's how good that card is. Take care of it. This has been a pretty exciting game. We get to see, we're in the seventh inning right now. Padres are, are beating the Royals. But we're getting to see all the stars for the Padres. A couple of the stars for the Royals are out today. You got Salvi, you got Lynch, you got Singer, no bit, no Bobby Witt. But uh, just the vibe out here is just so much different. I mean, look where we are, right? We're standing right next to the players. It just feels like if you want to really double down your love for baseball, come out to spring training and soak all this in, especially as a young player. It'll motivate you to take it even more serious out in the field back at home. We wrap up spring training and we're headed over to watch Jackson play in his baseball tournament. But along the way, we catch a glimpse of a sports card shop and we all know what that means. How much? How you doing today? Good. I'm Ty. Ty, I'm Daryl. I'm the owner. Darryl, great to meet you. What's going on here? So we, we were hunting around the area for card shops. A little mom and pop shop? Mom and pop shop. Just yeah. me and my wife. Just been doing it for about six years now. Okay. We cater more to the kids and to the collector. Okay. I do everything in a discount. We have a $50 blowout case over there. And we cater more to the 
team builders, to set builders okay. and stuff like that. I got a lot of guys come in and collect like the Milwaukee Brewers, Milwaukee Braves. But we just had Fred Rogers in here. He's the person who took Tony Gwynn's picture of his very first hit. Oh my gosh. July 1992, his very first hit. That's pretty cool. So Tony Gwynn is known as Mr. Padre. I mean, he had a great long career, 15 time All-Star, won eight National League batting titles, He's actually the last guy to really come close to hitting 400 back in 1994. Strike shortened season, he hit 394. Absolutely amazing player, great career, Hall of Fame career. This picture is in the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. Okay. And as far as he knows, it's the only picture of a Hall of Famer's first hit. That's such a special item. You got the autograph, the photograph, an awesome moment from Tony Gwynn's career. Definitely something I would love to have for my personal collection. For me, we try to do things for the collector. Okay. I know that's a broken record for a lot yeah. of people, but there's more collectors out there than our flippers. Once the mm. flippers die out, when they lose their money and they break, they're not going to come back. Where the collector's always going to be here. Like, I just picked up these in the collection today. We saw that. You're 60, doing a deal in the parking lot. Yeah, just came in. 60s baseball that is in really good shape. You start collecting for profit, you're always disappointed. You go out and spend $500 on a box of cards, yeah. and you get maybe $7,500 back on eBay. You lose interest, and then the parents get mad because no parent wants to spend that kind of money anymore. What's your strategy then? A guy walks in, brings these cards to you. Do you say, give me your price? What, what I usually try that? to tell them, first off, look around my store, see how I sell my stuff. Yeah. That way, when I give you an offer, you know I'm not trying to lowball you or take advantage of you. Mm. Second. I'll explain to them, it's your stuff. I can't buy and sell it. You tell me what you want, and if it's within reason, we'll discuss it. And I'll give you the reasons why I'm making this offer to you. Mm. What would you sell these two books for me? Well, honestly, I have not looked anything up yet, so I don't know <laughs> what I'd put on it. Yeah, take at a them? peek at them. Take your time. So when I see this, I think upside with grading. So this guy brought this in. Did you look at it on immediately know, like, oh man, the I condition looked at, looks good. I just looked at a couple pages of each book and saw some star cards and everything. So we started talking, made him an offer, and he liked my offer. Not a complete set. No. 60. I don't think there's too many superstars. I didn't see no mantles, but there was yeah. a couple mazes and there's maze. uh, in there. Got the Yastrzemski. You know it's good when they bring it in. It's in the book. Yes. In the binder. You'd be surprised how many times I see kids get this stuff from their grandparents and they put it in rubber bands or oh. It's like, oh. Tell me about being here with spring training and all the facilities here. Do you interact with players? You we try to. Come in? Is it hard? But it's, it's hard because their agents are all about the money. Okay. They really frown on their players, their contacts coming out and meeting their fans. The last time I was offered a major league ball player, it was $6,000 for two hours. Oh my it. gosh. So he obviously collected 59 to 61, or I don't know if this is the guy yeah, he's I'll collecting, but this is what he's got. What would you sell both these books to, to me for? Without looking anything up, just based on, on, the, on the things, I'm thinking three grand. Three grand? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't pay three grand for it. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably ideal stuff for your store, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Like I said, the Jim Brown definitely, as much as I hate to say golf, get graded, because I think they'll grade out fours and fives, and they're definitely some money there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. This is awesome. This is awesome stuff. I'd rather keep it in your store for you. No, oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>Tell people where they can find you, and then you can ring me up. Okay, here. well, I'm located at 3210 West Bell Road in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we've been here for six years now, and we hope to be another six. There you go. Customers are piling in, so we'll let Daryl get back to his, his job. That was a treat. Daryl is a lost art in the hobby. I'm so glad we stumbled into his card shop. If you are in Phoenix, in the area, go check him out. Sit down and chat with him. He makes me want to go open packs of cards bring back some nostalgia. So we're here at Cactus Park. We're getting ready to go do some little man on the street stuff and then go see my son play Sandpoint Sasquatch. It's gonna be fun. This ballpark looks great. So now I'm a little nervous. I'm a little excited. I can sense the tension with these guys. They don't know what they're gonna 
what to expect with the teams they're gonna play, but gosh, I wish I could relive my 14-year-old days and play out here. One, two, three, that's right. Not only are we watching baseball today, Topps provided us a bunch of hobby boxes to go around and give out to kids. So we're gonna have a little fun, test their knowledge of sports players, and give them a lot of cards to open. So Topps gave us cards to give out, and the premise is we think youth baseball players don't know baseball players that well. They know entertainment personalities more. I'm gonna show you a couple images. There's gonna be entertainment stars, there's gonna be baseball players. You have to tell me, you get two chances to tell me who each of these players are. Three packs left for you guys. They're all yours. If you can tell me one of these baseball players on here. You don't know who that is? Dude Perfect? Oh yeah, Dude Perfect. <laughs> Stops gave us some free cards. You take a pack. Enjoy. Which baseball player is that? Oh, I have no clue. <laughs> you know who that guy is, right? Luke Bryan. Luke Bryan. <laughs> Who's this? Thor. I don't that, that, that's your Thor guy. Thor. One more try. One more try since you're the first. No? I don't know anyone. <laughs> He's a rookie. Was well, a rookie last year? Brad Pitt Jr. The junior. Oh, Brad Pitt Jr. Brad Pitt Jr. Bobby Witt Jr. Bobby Witt. <laughs> Brad Pitt Jr. <laughs> Noah. Noah. Ah. I forgot that. I, yeah, uh, I know. I know. know. <laughs> Tops gave us some cards to give away to folks here. We're, we're testing if anyone knows baseball players' faces. Bobby Witt Jr. You guys know that's Dude Perfect, right? Tyler from Dude Perfect. Shohei Otani. Shohei, you were gonna get that, right? Can you go four in a row? Devin Booker. Aaron Judge. And impressive. There you go, guys. He's incredibly popular. Come on. You don't know him? I don't have baseball. You don't know him? Oh, that's you. <laughs> Take another one, man. Good job. That's very cool. Thank you. Cool. Though. You got it, guys. That's awesome. Just pulled a sweet jersey card. Don't ding it. Take care of it. Wait, Rookie it? for the Cubs. Three baseball cards. Here you go. Okay. You, you got. You got. Oh, show oh, A, right? Oh, wait. Julio oh. Rodriguez. Woo! You got. You got this down. No. Take a pack anyway. Enjoy. Done. Take a pack. Thanks, Tom. Okay, so we just spent a couple hours out here at the ballpark giving out cards to fans. First off, thank you to Tops for supplying the product. That was super fun. My theory was absolutely correct. Entertainment personalities, YouTube stars, almost consistently being guests. MLB players, not so much. We have a lot to work on in educating our, our youth players on who the baseball players are in major leagues. Remember that collection with Devin? Well, throughout the afternoon, we kept the conversation going and we ended up arranging an early evening meeting at his house. We're headed there right now. All right. So we are here, it's evening. Getting ready to go meet Devin, see some modern cars, some creative cards. It's been a long day, but I'm excited. Let's go do it. Hey, what's going on? Hey, hey. Come on in. Nice to see you. <laughs> Devin? Yes, sir. How you doing? Ty, good to meet you. Awesome. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks for having us out, man. I appreciate it. Of course, man. Welcome in. Yeah. Yes, sir. Not often do you uh, have Facebook interactions end in like recordings, <laughs> right? You're like, dude, you're so right. Uh, got all the cards in there if you want to check them out. Oh, okay, awesome. What? This is like a man cave dream. So just a little background to Manchester United and where everything comes from here is my father grew up in Europe. And so this is where Manchester United in their heyday is exactly who he was loving. Everybody that he wanted to see was on this team. Okay. And so that's the background to it. Is this you and your dad collecting? That is correct. Oh, yeah. so this is more than just a little side hobby. This is legit. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we have some relatively rare stuff. Um, we have a couple of the Busby Babes, which was a really famous era for that team. And then along with that too, probably one of my favorite pieces that I just got in was a ticket from the treble winning season for Manchester United. Um, treble meaning that they won the 
Premier League, which is their domestic competition. Okay. They won the FA Cup, which is also another domestic competition for them. Includes a couple other teams, and then the Champions League as well. So who do you PC in here? I mean, I see David Beckham, I see Ronaldo. Yeah. You just go after it all. Yeah, cool. uh, we have uh, Marcus Rashford as well. And then obviously some of the bigger names uh, in terms of their history, but anything that is Manchester United has some cool patches. Oh, I mean, yeah. those, those are things that really catch my eye. This isn't something that I really care of the value of, but it's something that means a heck of a lot to me. Um, and so with that as well, I mean, this is 100 to 200 cards deep of my passion. And then this is a piece that's super special to our family. My father did do a mission trip uh, into Kenya. The places that he was in, they just did not have a lot. And this mm. is a, a perfect representation of it to kind of show the dichotomy and just for us to be grateful about the things that they have. This was their soccer ball. This is what makes the hobby so great to me, is that you can connect what we love about sports with something meaningful about people. Tell me a little bit about your origin story in the hobby. We exchanged some notes on it, but explain to me how you got involved in the hobby, because it sounds like you recently got involved, yes. like kind of like on the flipping side at least, yeah. maybe more so in the collecting <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, my parents told me, hey, we have a bunch of your dad's cards that are just sitting around. And I go, ooh. Because I saw the news stories about them, I saw that these things could actually be worth a heck of a lot of money. And then it brought me back to my childhood, hey, these cards are awesome. Hmm. And so a little bit of, a little bit of, hey, there's a monetary aspect to it, but the nostalgia, like you see here, is amazing. And then now, funny enough, I actually work for an auction house that has um, a multitude of different items, including sports memorabilia, sports cards, and anything under the sun that's pop culture. Wow, can you say who? Yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the name is the name is Pristine Auction. You work for Pristine Auction, yes, sir. So okay. that the, I, I work down there. Um, it's right next to the FBI building, so we're pretty safe. Yeah, um, say, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, I absolutely love working there. To be able to connect something like this with a hobby to what I like to do, um, and obviously get paid for it, is just mm. the ultimate dream for me. Are you serious? I mean, so we're five minutes in to checking out Devin's collection. Look, we walk into these, they're spur of the moment. We don't know what we're gonna see sometimes and the expectations can be all over the place. But to walk in around the corner and to see that card room of not just well-organized good stuff, but like high-end rare soccer stuff, man, like I'm, I'm already intrigued with everything else and now he works for Pristine and he has all kinds of background in the hobby. This could be a really fun conversation over the next few minutes. So you got back in it, you started flipping, you sell on what platforms? What have you kind of gravitated towards? Yeah, um, I sell on eBay. That's where I first started and where I kind of grew from there. Okay. Uh, I also sell on my slabs um, and then I just got onto Whatnot and then obviously kind of dabbled around in some Facebook groups. So that's kind of how you and I connected. Yeah. But those are my four main platforms right now. What have you learned kind of in that process of selling? <laughs> <laughs> because I think about yeah. it in terms of somebody who's coming in who had experience in the hobby and in the last two years, it's just been all over the place. Yeah. What, what, what are some lessons you've learned? Um, gosh, it, <laughs> that for me, hype is really built into a player's value. So yeah. you can see guys like Justin Herbert yeah. versus Joe Burrow. You can see that there are some value differences and Lamar Jackson is a perfect example, mm -hmm. but those, those value differences are massive because of the hype that's put around them. Really the biggest difference obviously is that Joe Burrow did really well in the playoffs, but ultimately doesn't have a championship to show for it. Hmm. Um, so hype is very big. That's also something that I see with work as well. Um, and then on top of that too, a lot of people like the rarity. I mean, of course it's it's bigger now, but numbered cards, autographs, something that you gravitated as well when you yeah. saw some of my cards. Yeah. Um, those different things, I mean, any way that you can get your hand on the game rather than just a hand on the card, I think is also something that's super special. If I'm, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be in the long haul for it because I know as well as you that in 2020, a bunch of people flooded the hobby wanting to do something, but then a lot of people left because it wasn't something that had say an immediate turn or it was a little more intensive than they were ready for. So this is everything that I was showing you before. Yeah. And then that actually, is everything that I just brought up. <laughs> okay, so before I look at anything, yeah, you obviously acquire collections. Yes, sir. Tell me about that. I mean, we travel the United States looking at collections, but you yeah. do it here locally. What's kind of your story there? Yeah, um, so funny enough, in one of the Facebook groups that I'm in, yeah. uh, one of the guys was just saying, hey, I got X number of cards, this and that, and it was my first collection that I had purchased. And so just out of the blue, I saw a couple cards that he had and just the light bulb went on him and 
I went, wow. I mean, this guy, is, he just jumps into a bunch of breaks and is just looking to continue to move and groove mm -hmm. in that avenue. And so I, I, I had to jump at the opportunity and the interaction has been fantastic and I got a bunch of awesome cards out of it. Man, we keep coming across these stories of collectors going all in on breaks, trying to hit those huge cards only to sell their entire collection for less than they originally bought in for. The market hype from 2020 is still making ripples in the card world. So when you flip cards, you're selling yes. them, what are you doing with the money? Are you putting it back into cards or are you? Yes, um, so that's kind of what, how our business model is running. Obviously okay. there's a little bit of income that was tossed into it initially, but it's basically just been self-serving and a lot of it is just you purchase a card, have that profit margin, and then we continue to move based off of that. So we cover cards and then obviously have a, hopefully a little bit on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. So who else outside of soccer do you PC? Uh, I've started to actually PC some Tom Brady cards. Um, he was just a guy that me growing up and watching football, yeah. I hated him because he was so darn good and that's the reason why I love him because now that I'm removed from the game, yeah. I have a different perspective on it. Definitely something that I could just admire the passion that he brought to it and obviously the success level is just unprecedented. So that's somebody, that's that's my Jordan per se. He's the guy that, that I saw in that level. So you just picked the best possible, the, be the best player of all time to, to collect. That's Arguably, nice. yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what's the story with the uh, the DNA search? You have one of a couple of Josh Allen, one of Giannis. Yeah. Um, did you get him signed yourself? I did not. Gotcha. Really wish I did. But yeah. um, what I've what I've just wanted to get into more. I mean, for me personally, I love the aspect and the idea that somebody actually took the time to give him the card. These guys sat down, even if yeah. it was for 500 of them, and they signed it, which differentiates all the the, uh, the cards that look like it. Because those yeah. obviously aren't really signed from the factory. Right. Um, so I got that one raw, sent it in for grading, and came out like that. This Giannis Auto is special not so much because it was a dna autograph so i mean someone took it and got an autograph but because we've heard through the grapevine that Giannis antetokounmpo does not sign autographs very much anymore so to grab an autograph rookie i'm all for it really tough to grade because all of those cards are paper cards but got the beckett certification then i wanted to make sure i slapped it up to maintain that value to it that one's even beckett witnessed yeah so that means it was at a show or something right yes and beckett's witnessing yep. it beckett you know, was there this is the card that drew me into your entire into the meeting with you. Yeah. This this Lux Steph Curry rookie, not not a rookie. Yeah, but uh, yeah, short print out of forty. Forty Lux obviously isn't a product that's around anymore. Yeah, um, but I mean, such a super thick cardstock has that edge to it that looks metallic, I believe. Um, just a super awesome card. Caught my dad's eye. He was the one that popped it off of pristine, but that was something that <laughs> <laughs> it's a good buy. Yeah, absolutely. So, who's your preferred grading company? I honestly, the most I've graded with is with SGC. Those guys to me okay. turn out the best, the quickest return time. They have the, the best um, feeling slabs to me. I love them. And then on top of that too, their customer service is like no other. Well, I would agree with you on all those. <laughs> Devin is super impressive. You can tell he's gained a lot of knowledge from working at pristine auctions, but he's also just in love with the hobby. He's combining this strategic approach to the way he collects but also making sure that he doesn't fall far away from what collecting really should be. Super, super impressed with Devin so far. Do you run numbers based on like what it sells for on eBay versus what it sells for on Pristine? I check that too because I'm in the marketing department there. So okay. I, I use the eBay uh, prices in order to get an idea as to what we should market and what we should really push forward in, in terms of hey, this is a really sweet piece, super rare. Let's make sure that everybody can, can see it. Yeah. Not to say that, oh, Joe Schmo's card isn't gonna be seen, but at the same time, we wanna make sure that there is some sort of a priority level there. Yeah, yeah. got it. When you, uh, now I'm just really curious from like a marketing side, this is also yeah. cool. Another <laughs> Steph Curry auto. Wonder where I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna ask. I'm just gonna assume the rest your dad found. All right, uh, hold on. Tell us what you think about Devin's pricing strategy and the whole comp mindset in the comments below. And while you're at it, go ahead and weasel your way over to that like button and smash it for us if you could. Back to the show. So what do you think the hardest thing is, maybe not even from Pristine, but you work for Pristine, yes. to get the consumer, the, the sports car consumer, to go to a different auction yeah. site, a different auction house? I mean, what's the misconceptions they have and the things that you have to get them to believe? Yeah, um, I think the hardest thing for people to kind of, I guess, grasp with is, is that all, everything that we sell is authentic. Everything yeah. passed a certain check to make sure that it is real. And if it didn't, sent back to whoever sent it to us. Um, and that you're always gonna find something that's a great deal. Um, yeah. You're always gonna find something that you're not gonna see again. 
that being actually the card that you just rolled right by, the Larry Bird. This is from the year that he was drafted by the Celtics, but he didn't play that, that rookie year because mm -hmm. he went back to school. He was holding out for, say, a little bit more money. Um, but then ended up going ended up going back into the league right after that. So mm -hmm. he signed his rookie sticker there, which was a piece that obviously my dad again got it from pristine. Couldn't pass up on something yeah. like that. It's just an awesome story. That is a really cool story. Oh, on there top. it is. Come on. There it is. There it is. Not even fair. <laughs> Wild card stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know that I really understand it, but I think, it's, I think it's awesome that they get all these guys to sign these and be able to put some pieces into them. Yeah. Wowzers. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. That's You're gonna have saying. some fun. Yeah. Desmond Ritter to Like when you get this collection, what'd you pay for this? Like five grand, two grand? I paid, I think four, a little over four. Um, and then Good because he has so many other cards too, we're, we're like doing it in payments and then putting it together. So that's awesome. What that's a what great saying. relationship, right? Yeah, absolutely. Is this all the basketball up here? Yeah, so like basketball, that? I have baseball, the redemptions, and then football sitting right here. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Badly off center, but my gosh, that's yep. a good card. <laughs> it's sad, I remember even just a few years ago, knowing every color, parallel, what they're number two. Now yep. there's like a billion different colors. It's like I know. you have to always it's, check. It's killer. And it's not the same from product to product. Yeah. Bones Highland. Yeah, I really wish that that guy <laughs> got, got, got more together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to think about the money he was spending on breaks to get this stuff. That's what's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's definitely a gamble. You just have to make sure that you break with the right people and that they are breaking the product that makes sense, that's good. We could either do it now or we could, you, you probably want to look at these again and we have a list of stuff already. Yeah. I mean, like, so for the cards that you had pulled out initially, obviously uh, add that one as, as a couple extra bucks on top of it. Yeah. Um, but what I was looking to get for those was probably about 8K. Yeah. So I, I think that that's fair given that a ton of these guys are in the off season or they're stepping into a really dull portion yeah. of the NBA season. So, so uh, and I don't disagree with okay. you. Um, the only problem I have is that we're coming at it from the same angle. For sure. Because you're reselling, right? And, I, and and some of this, will, like the Market Porter stuff, obviously will go into my PC. Definitely. But most of this, we run a business too. So it's like, I'm looking at it. If I can invest in a one of one now and you're ready to sell it, I'll buy it and I'll hold it for six months. For sure. Whereas maybe you're not ready. Maybe you're just like, I'll just wait six <laughs> months. So for me, the number was going to be below seven. Okay. I was going to offer you 65. Okay. Because my margin would be, I'll make the 1500 instead of you having to sell on eBay. Gotcha. So that's where I was at with all that. But I just pulled stuff out too. So there's, sure. there's less in there now. Gotcha. Um, so that that's the unfortunate reality because you have your act together. Yeah, you thank know, you. I appreciate it. You really do. Like you're doing a great job. I can just tell, and and I'm not I'm not here to rip you off. I'm here because I run a business too. So it's like I'm looking at it. If you're willing to sell a bunch of stuff at the same time, I'll give you PayPal, friends and family. You can take it and be done with it. I got gotcha. you. If you're not, if you're gonna go sell all the show this weekend, <laughs> you're probably gonna be like, I'm gonna go sell the show this weekend. Yeah, uh, I get it. I totally get it. Mm -hmm. So my thought would be if. You, if we look at this again, put the list together real quick, and if you look at that stuff and you add it all together and it's like, well, now we're at $11,000, yeah. maybe you're willing to work a little bit more on the price. Okay. If you, if you want, I don't know. Yeah, for that, sure. That's my offer, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know that I could go as low as probably six around there for yeah. that. Um, and then not, not really knowing a heck of a lot of the values that are sitting on yeah. this table. I think that I would wanna make sure that I can get my numbers right. And then because you're gonna be at the show, yeah. you and I can definitely link up there. I don't have any sitting offers for any of these cards here okay. currently, which a little mind blowing, as you can kind of see what's value wise here. Um, but I definitely love to connect with you again. And I think that we can work out a deal here. Yeah, I like I like that. So let's awesome. let's let me snag some pictures of all yeah, this real absolutely. quick, and then snag pictures of that. Yeah. So you and I are on the same page. Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing I do want to address that I think is important for the audience, it's important for people to know, yeah. is you look at you look at three to five cards back on your comps. Yeah. So give me your logic in that because I've done it a long time too. Yeah. And in this market, I struggle with going six months back on a price where it's like sometimes you can't have to, but yeah. Of course. So along with that, I mean, there's a number of different things to plan to, for me to check a comp. Obviously, if I'm looking at, say, a base third year John Morant card, there's going to be a heck of a lot more sales there. And so I want to make sure that I can capture enough data that makes sense to show where the market is. Um, but obviously, I'm not taking the high of, say, the last sale, which could be something that maybe didn't go through or somebody just bid the heck out of it because they love John Morant. 
And so I'm trying to take yep. in the, the bottom and the top to understand, well, here is where this car tends to sell at and make sure that we take into account a lot of the different things that buyers really are keyed in on. Yeah. 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 Um, it helps you. <laughs> it helps you because <laughs> you does. take in prices that were higher six months ago. I yeah. totally get it. Um, my rebuttal to that would be you have the cards listed. Yeah, for sure. And you know what the offers are. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's no offers, I don't know. No, I gotcha. You. You're pricing them high enough. I, I saw your cards yeah. in there. You're pricing them high enough to where you feel like if you get an offer, I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, for sure. And and there there is obviously some of that baked into where I don't really wanna use a comp that's from six months because it doesn't make sense for where the market yeah. is currently at. Yeah. Um, but given some of the rarity of these different cards, I wanna either check them against something that's similarly numbered or is a similar product to where I can get a comp that makes sense yep. because the, the last thing that I want to do is walk up to somebody's table and just see ridiculous prices that's just going to melt my brain and I don't want to work with somebody that doesn't yeah. want to work with me yeah you know so that, that's why I take into a consideration a bunch of different things I'm, I love to make deals with people and I want to make sure that they have a great experience in the hobby just like I have I love it yeah okay awesome well let's let's definitely Let's, let me take some pictures of this okay. and let's figure out a way to get a deal done Perfect. tomorrow. You'll be at there tomorrow, right? Yeah, so I'll be there Saturday, or sorry, Friday through uh, Sunday. The whole show? Yep. Okay. So you got a Jalen Hurts uh, XR RPA, number to 10, gold, obviously super beautiful. And then, <laughs> hello, <laughs> this gem that's sitting right here, Trevor Lawrence, one of one, jacket patch out of XR as well. Okay, so he's got two stellar quarterback rookie cards there. He's got the one of one Trevor Lawrence. He's got the number to 10 gold Jalen Hurts. I love them both. It's off season, so I'm kind of hoping I can get a better deal because it's off season and I'm gonna have to hold these for six to eight months before they realize the value. The struggle I have right now is that XR Trevor Lawrence one of one is kind of an off brand. So to, to really judge what that price should be, it's kind of a crap shoot. You have to guess by looking at all kinds of comps across different brands. And so we also oh, have man. select 2021 Patrick Mahomes insert, which is phenomenon out of 25 BGS9. Beautiful. And then this is one that's really interesting to me as well. Uh, a Darius Garland select pink number to four BGS95. The fun part about that is just that you can only pull it out of packs at the Beckett Industry Summit. And so this this card obviously being out of four. There's no comps. Dude, yeah. This, this card's not showing up anywhere. That was the hardest card to figure out. <laughs> Trust me, I was I like, can, I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, beautiful. Yep, you got a Steph Curry insert, superlative signatures, uh, and then the auto as well. And then it's a PSA 9. Shohei Otani, case hit out of select, color wheel, BGS 9. That's awesome. You know. <laughs> There's a few of those out there, but yeah. For sure. And then you have a There's Steph Curry 2014 Lux Auto number to, uh, what is that, 40? Yep, 3440. Yep. And then you have second year Noir, Luka Doncic uh, out of 10, and this is Icon Edition. And then Giannis. that one, a 2013 Panini Prestige Giannis uh, rookie card of his. It's a PSA 8, and then the auto on it is a 9. Okay, so let's play a little game. If you can't spell his last <laughs> name right, I get the card for free. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think I could do it. Okay, but, let's see. Okay. All right, A N T E T O K O U N M P O. Dang it. Did I get it? Impressive. Oh, that's so that's awesome. That's really good. That's so awesome. <laughs> okay, so even if we don't get the deal done here, it's totally fine. Transactions don't just include exchanging cards and money, they, they involve getting to know somebody and building a relationship. Coming out here, meeting Devin and his dad is worth more than just exchanging money and getting a deal done. Super excited I came out here today. Uh, and then we have a Larry Bird signed Fleer sticker. And dude, such a cool start. We talked about this, this is such a cool card. Okay, there's the stack that we've already talked about. And Perfect. then here's the new stuff. Sky Moore, number yes. to 10, first impressions, illusions. Yep. I'm a Chiefs guy, Kansas City guy, so. Love it, man. Not a super valuable card, but it's for sure. a cool card. Yeah. McCaffrey, <laughs> these are gold vinyls. They yes. look like they look like super fractors. Yep. P you got a gold version. vinyl number to five from 2019 Prism. Two mosaic Brady's. Yep. Those, yeah. uh, this one is out of choice, and then that one is just out of regular mosaic. So choice is number, who, who knows what the parallel color <laughs> is, it's whatever. Uh, number to 80. Yep. And, and then number to 99. 99. Yep. This is a cool card. I love that one. Yeah. <laughs> so one of our guys that works with this, Tyson Banker, is a big uh, Jonathan Taylor fan. So I'm going to see if I can get him to get this one. Sweet. Tie-dye, 25. Yes, sir. And then you got stained glass, Evan Mobley. It's such Come a cool on. card. Such a cool Dude, card. It's so cool. I love that stained glass set. And then you have uh, you have Immaculate, Carl uh, Anthony Towns Soul uh, Patch out of 25. That thing is just so cool. He just convinced me to buy a shoe card. <laughs> 
<laughs> what uh, thought, man? This is my guy, Michael Porter Jr. Obsidian. This is uh, this year's, right? This is, uh, yeah, 21, 22. Uh, oh, that's uh, last year's product, then. Oh, good point. Yep. Yeah, good point. And then uh, Mikael Bridges. Love that thing, dude. That thing's so cool. Such a cool card. <laughs> Number two out of 10. Yes, sir. All right, that's a big stack of valuable cards. That's what I'm saying, man. Okay, so we just wrapped up with Devin, and that was one heck of a great time. Uh, I mean, you just never know what you're gonna get when you walk into these collections, and everything checked the box in this one. I walked out with a little bit of a lesson learned, too. It's go tie sentimental value to cards if you can, because you saw what it meant to Devin's dad, and you saw what it meant to Devin. That's a great way with separating what a personal collection is and what you can buy and sell to support that personal collection. Awesome, man. Thanks for coming out. I really yeah, appreciate so it. So we'll see you tomorrow at the show. We'll yes. Hopefully close our deal. Yep. And Table M6. M6. Yes, sir. Mission Impossible 6. <laughs> there it is. Done. Cool. Thank awesome. you again, man. Thanks for, for coming sure. out. It's trips like these that rekindle the kid inside of all of us. Spending a few days at the ballpark, consuming unhealthy amounts of stadium food, and seeing youth open packs of cards with organic enthusiasm was just what we needed. We left with a few cards for our store, but more importantly, we left with a renewed appreciation of the joy sports cards can bring. If you love this episode, be sure to check out the other 24 episodes in our library right now. And most of all, keep chasing.